I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nihal Jam from Edelweiss Securities. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, Rutuja, and good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of Edelweiss, I would like to welcome you all to the Q3 FY21 result of Wellspun India. From the management today, we have Mr. Rajesh Mandavewala, Managing Director, Ms. Dipali Goenka, CEO and Joint Managing Director, Mr. Sanjeev Sanjeeti, President, Finance and CFO, and Mr. Akhil Jindal, Group CFO and Head Strategy. I would now like to hand over the call to Ms. Dipali Goenka for her opening remarks. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Nihal. Good afternoon, and a very warm welcome to all of you to Western India's quarter three FI21 earnings call. I hope that you and your family are feeling and keeping well and safe. The year 2021 begins with a ray of hope with recent breakthroughs on COVID-19 vaccines. This should play a major role in the next round of economic recovery. I will cover the key business updates, and later Sanjeev will take you through the financial highlights. I'm delighted to report record-breaking quarter as we have been able to register our highest ever quarterly income. The incredible effort and commitment of our associates who also kept the workplaces safe during these uncertain times has been a key driver to a superior performance. This has resulted in highest ever bath linen and rugs and carpet sales volumes in a quarter. Demand based on order book seems well distributed and across retailers and other formats. Current order bookings are upbeat for upcoming quarters. The strong emergence of home body economy is becoming apparent and there's visible structural shift in consumers spending for home products. The holiday period saw a significant change in the share of holiday purchase spend. And we saw heightened demand during the holiday period as compared to previous holiday seasons on the back of strong, record-breaking online sales. As we had mentioned in a last earning call, consumers were reluctant to resume their normal out-of-home activities and were spending more time at home. The retail home furnishings category has seen tremendous growth in the last few months, owing to conscious preference for quality and performance driven by hygiene and wellness over heavy discounted products. This has gone a long way in increased demand for a product's home textiles. Home textiles revenue grew by 26% year on year. During the quarter, under consideration, our plants at Vapi and Anjar operated at peak capacity. With the customer demand continuing to be buoyant, the board has approved a capacity expansion to debottlenecking and rebalancing of facilities at both the plants. It will be a capital light quick turnaround expansion, resulting in increased capacity of towels by 7%, bed linen by 20%, and rugs and carpets by 80%. The company is expected to spend around 225 crores over FI21 and FI22. This capital light investment will help us to create additional annualized revenue of over rupees 1,200 crores by, by the second year of operation. The benefits from this expansion will start accruing in phases from as early as quarter one FY22. Innovation is an integral part of Wellspun's DNA and the foundation on which our customer-centric solutions are built. Wellspun has always focused on consumers' needs and catered to them with innovations like nanocore technology, industry-defining multi-level traceability process, WellTrack, that tracks finished products back to the raw materials, as well as hydrocotton technology. Our innovation-driven approach has helped us to challenge the status quo, set new industry benchmarks, and build an industry-leading portfolio of 30 innovations over the years. Our innovation product sales during the quarter was more than 600 crores, registering a growth of 36% year-on-year and 61% quarter-on-quarter. We are proud to be amongst the most influential innovators at the Clarivate South and South East Asia Innovation Award 2020. Wellspun won the award in the corporation segment and was the only player from the textile and apparel industry. The award is a testament to our efforts and motivates us 
to keep developing more relevant and innovative solutions for our customers. While the COVID caught the world's attention in 2020, the climate crisis continues to be the biggest concern for our planet Earth. Businesses are increasingly changing the ways to adjust for the climate crisis by innovating more sustainable and environment-friendly solutions. Consumers now demand that brands should be more transparent, environmentally conscious in the production and delivery of their goods. At Wellspring India, we are completely conscious about the challenges that society faces and the role WIL can play in surmounting them. Over the last few years, we have made significant investments in the area of sustainability, including amongst other initiatives like rainwater harvesting lagoons, sewage treatment plant to lower the freshwater footprint. We also run a social initiative called SPUN, which is not only based on upcycling, but is also dedicated to women empowerment. With significant progress already made in the areas of sustainability, the company is at the cusp, taking its ESG initiatives to the next level. To achieve its mid and long-term ESG goals, the company has embarked upon an ambitious ESG strategy explained more elaborately in the earnings update. I'm glad to share that Wellspun is already rated low risk on ESG factors by one of the top ESG rating agency, and we're conducting gap assessment study and identifying measures to move to negligible risk rating. Wellspun's sustainability journey is now a case study on ID publishing website. Recent trend shows that China's share in US market continues to be under pressure, and this is more evident, especially in the rugs and flooring products. We are seeing shift from China to India already happening over the last few months. Walmart has recently announced that it will triple its sourcing of goods from India to $10 billion each year by 2027. Walmart's new import commitment is expected to provide a significant boost to companies like Wellspun. Wellspun and Walmart go over two decades and had been sharing a relationship built on mutual respect and trust. We are truly humbled to be recognized by Doug McMillan, President and CEO of Walmart, as one of their key suppliers at the recent HT Leadership Summit 2020. Pandemic has accelerated online spend significantly beyond prior years, and online spending on home goods continue to post record-breaking numbers. Online sales continued its trend with Amazon led early start to holiday buying, followed by major big box retailers who also witnessed multi-fold increase in online sales compared to previous years. Our e-commerce business has grown 22% year on year. In order to give further impetus to our e-commerce strategy, we have embarked upon Project Wave accelerated e-commerce growth, which should lead to a top line of over 100 million by 23. We have taken rapid strides in our B2C business to license brands, which will enable us to deepen our connect with consumers across markets and aspirational categories. Martin Stewart brand will see expansion both online as well as on offline. Martha brand has already clocked a turnover of about $20 million since inception, and we continue to see strong performance. We are also very excited about the prospect of Scott Living brand which we have signed up last quarter. Licensed brand brings to us new opportunity, pockets by opening up new channels and shelf space without cannibalizing our existing business. And we expect annualized revenue from licensed brands to cross $100 million in the next two to three years time. Emerging businesses. The company witnessed strong performance in the domestic retail as consumer confidence recovered quicker than expected supported by the festival season and fall in COVID cases. E-commerce continued to stellar run, whereas modern trade fared better in quarter three after soft quarter two. We added six new towns and 341 outlets for wealth fund brand distribution. Modern trade grew 14% by, backed by best in class executions at stores. We reached 350 million consumers through a Rangla campaign and a new health life campaign reached around 12 million views on YouTube and around 2 million reached through social media. We are glad to share that the domestic retail business achieved its highest ever revenue in a quarter at more than 82 crores, growing by 16% year on year. 
they're extremely enthused with a significant turnaround seen in the retail demand over the last few months. And it gives us the confidence of crossing annualized revenue of rupees 1,000 crores over the next four years. During the quarter, the advanced textile business continued to meet the growing demand of disposable non-woven category, with the industrial segment also showing recovery. In spun lease, we are seeing better price realization and improved operation metrics. Buoyancy is global demand, especially for disposable non-woven category, strong consumer relationships, and superior product and service offering will keep our plants fully occupied in the coming quarters. Revenue during the quarter stood at Rs. 74 crores, registering 20% growth year on year. The new disinfectant wipes line is expected to commence production in February 21, while the expansion of Spunley's business is expected to commence operations by September 2021. These would help this business achieve top line of around 600 crores by FY23. During the quarter of the SPC plant ran at optimum capacity, we saw positive traction in our export business, especially in hard flooring, as we added new clients across geographies and also added B2B distributors to our network. The ticket size of orders also increased from clients with whom we had established relationships in the earlier quarters indicating a very good level of customer satisfaction from our product offerings and services. We also bagged our first orders from EU, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand regions for quarter four dispatches. And these geographies are expected to contribute significantly to overall businesses going forward. A soft floating business has also started taking shape with strong inquiries from US, Canada, and ROW. In order to optimize capacity utilization of the soft flooring plant, we plan to produce rugs and carpets for a home textile customer from Belston Flooring Facility, as a facility at Wapi is running at peak capacity. Coming to a domestic flooring business, quarter three saw tailwinds as we added businesses from large marquee brands across both commercial and hospitality channels. With continued focus on network expansion, we have added 20 plazas and 82 portals to our retail footprint. We have also upgraded our plaza format retail stores to enable a better visualization of our products. In order to strengthen digital channels, we have overhauled the Belspin flooring website to make navigation more intuitive and easier. Our digital strategy of customer acquisition saw 210% growth quarter on quarter. Total flooring business grew more than 3x year on year and our branded product revenue grew by 107% year on year. The business looking very strong in the hard flooring segment and with the soft flooring starting to gain traction, we are confident that we should be able to achieve EBITDA break even in quarter three FY22 and cash break even even during FY23. The company maintains an optimistic outlook for the rest of the year. The company remains committed in its long aspiration of this delivering sustainable and profitable volume-led growth, building on strong brand equity and gradually driving and scaling up new pillars of growth. Now, I would hand over the call to Sanjeev to provide updates on financial numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Dipali. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for joining the Q3 of my 91 Western India earnings com call. I will, give, I will give a brief overview of the financial numbers for the quarter before we open for Q&A. I hope everyone must have got a chance to look at the earnings presentation and press release by now. After my interaction with various stakeholders and feedback received, I'm happy to share that from this quarter, we have not only started disseminating volume numbers for each of our businesses, but also other granular, granular statistics, which will help you to track the company's progress with clear lens. We have always been ahead of the curve, and we will take your suggestions, feedback to improve on the disclosures further. I'm delighted to share that during the quarter, the company achieved highest ever sales volume in bath linen and drug linen carpets. Bath linen sales grew by 17% by a while, Bed linen sales volume grew by 43% by OI, and rugs and carpet sales volume grew by 28% by OI. 
During the quarter, the total income grew by 27% from 16.05 crores to 2050 crores, and EBITDA grew by 75% to reach 419 crores versus 239 crores in the same quarter of last year, with an EBITDA margin of 20.4%. Even though the plants were not running in the initial period of the current financial year because of government imposed lockdown on account of COVID, we have been still able to achieve revenue EBITDA growth over IDD20. While on an absolute basis, EBITDA margins improved by 554 basis points over the previous year, revenue and EBITDA of Q3FI20 were impacted due to reversal of 95 crores on account of MEIF. Even after adjusting this reversal, the EBITDA margin of Q3FI21 is higher by 80 basis points. We have been able to improve our EBITDA margin in spite of increase in input costs. The increase in other expenses is mainly volume link dispensers like stores and spares, dyes, chemicals, power and fuel, etc. Apart from increasing logistic costs due to global increasing threat rates, finance costs have increased in this quarter due to the counting charge of rupees 16 crores on redemption of preference shares by one of our subsidiaries, which is a one time charge as we pre the uh, the redemption due to um, higher cash flow in that company. Profit after tax stood at rupees 181 crores, up 147% by OY. Reported TTM EPS stood at 4.93 versus 3.41 in the same period last year. Average exchange realization for this quarter was 74.08 versus 73.71 in the corresponding quarter last year. Net debt of the company stood at 2469 crores, a reduction of 493 crores over March 2020. Over the last three and a half years, our net debt by PT has come down to 0 0.70 times as on 31st December 20 versus 1.27x as on 31st March 2017. And there is continuous improvement in ROCE in spite of adding capacities in various businesses which will yield significant cash flows in the future. Net debt of the core businesses reduced by rupees 235 crores in the last nine months. Till date, we have spent to be 293 crores in CAPEX, and for the full year, it is expected to be around 500 crores, including the recent investment announced for home textile business. In spite of investments in our growth businesses, net debt is expected to remain below 2,400 crores as on 31st March 2021. Coming to segmental result, Q3 FI21 home textile revenue stood at 1967 crores versus Rupees 1549 crores during the same period last year, growing by 27% YOY. EBITDA margins stood at 22.1%, up 308 basis points versus the previous quarter of the same year. During the quarter, revenue from flowing business was rupees 98 crores, up 348% YOY, and 27% Q on Q. EBITDA loss narrowly, uh, uh, EBITDA loss. Uh, narrowed marginally to rupees 24 crores versus a loss of 30 crores in Q2 FI21. We are seeing improved improvement quarter on quarter, and we expect that we should be able to clock over rupees 300 crores of revenue in this financial year. As Nepali has already mentioned, in the flooring business, we should be able to achieve a bit of break even by Q3 of the next financial year. During the quarter, advanced sector business clocked the revenue of 75 crores up 20% by OI. Emerging growth business, which includes branded business, e com business, flooring business, and advanced textile, cumulatively grew by 46% by OI and contributed 23% to the top line during the quarter on capacity and addition. The party has already covered on the capital light expansion in the home textile business. In advanced textile expansion project, we have recalibrated our investment and out of the rupees 496 crores project announced earlier, rupees 196 crores have, have been deferred. Hard flooring is running at optimum capacity due to the strong demand in order book, while the capacity of hard flooring has been doubled in January 2021. It is being further doubled by Q2 FI22 to cater to the growing demand. Increasing minimum support price by 3 to 5 percent has resulted in 8 to 10 percent increase in cotton prices since last quarter. Decreasing production estimates, increasing global consumption, and ban on 
zinc and cotton in US will keep pressure on raw material prices. ROSCTL has been discontinued since for January 2021, and RODTEP scheme has come into effect from January 21. New policy rates for RODTEP scheme is yet to be announced by the government. All round increase in input prices and global threat costs will keep the margin and pressure in the coming quarter. And hence, we have already started discussion with our key customers for price increase. While our drive towards a cost optimization, use of technology. and improve efficiency aided further by strong business prospects and robust outlook we believe we should be able to maintain overall ebitda margin between 19 to 20% on an overall top line of over rupees 2300 crores we remain focused on our strategic priorities and growth pillars we continue to lay emphasis on a long term goal of sustainable growth and profitability and delivering our balance sheet with this uh, uh, i will i will hand over the Uh, and hand it over to the pillar with the party uh, you know for any further comments and then we may open to q&a sure thank you sanjeev i think over to you over to nihal and everybody there thank you very much Hi. we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kirti Jain from Sundara Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, my first question is with regard to the RO CTL and uh, RO DTP. So currently, given that the rates are not available, uh, will we be do recognizing the revenues uh, based on the provisional rates, or how the uh, accounting will happen, sir? Uh, given that there is no rates available currently with regard to RO DTP. so let me take this uh, so so first thing is uh, so the policy change has been announced from january 1 and Correct, uh, between now and end of march we expect the rates to get announced and uh, and, uh, and this of course a very hectic uh, work that our associations are doing and uh, this it appears to us that it is in final stages now so so we we believe that before march all these rates will get announced and and what will get recognized is uh, is what is visible so so we will recognize uh, this be a new rod dtp rates uh, as they are declared in this quarter okay uh, so with regard to say old rates which is expected to be lower than the new rates do you expect uh, a pass on over two to three quarters pass on can happen sir look we have we have consistently maintained that our business is is good for a for a sustained uh, Uh, 20% kind of an ebitda margin and 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 we have we have seen this these cost pushes and pressures and and the exchange rate movements and the and the and the incentive movements both in the upward and downward direction so so i i believe our business is robust enough to, uh, to pass on all such eventualities uh, to to our clients yes uh, you know you could have you could take a couple of quarters to get there but uh, i guess uh, this we have built enough uh, enough strategic relationships with our key clients to be able to to get back to our uh, this uh, expected sales or margin so so we are uh, and as dipali said that uh, despite uh, you know this whatever the pressure so we believe that we will be able to pass on all these to our clients so then uh, sanjeev sir had highlighted about 2300 crores of turnover The 2,300 crore turnover was with regard to what, sir? 7,300 crores for the full okay. year of 2021. Okay. 2,300. That must be a maybe I misstated, but it's I'm talking about the 7,300 crores plus turnover for the financial year, which is 2021. Okay. So next year, uh, this year we have highlighted around 500 crore capex. Next year, uh, approximately what would be the capex, sir? Given the projects so, which we have planned, up. we will be around uh, 600 crores uh, or thereabouts in the next year. So, 
uh, and this covers of course uh, the new uh, home textile capacity growth uh, that uh, Dipali just mentioned about so uh, which is which is a good uh, 200 225 crore so all inclusive we should be around the around the 600 crore mark okay uh, so next year uh, again we will be targeting a double digit growth at minimum sir given the ramp up in the uh, flooring business at the corporate level so kt again on the on the growth part we have been consistent that we will uh, deliver double digit growth uh, and it's not about this year or the next year so so on a consistent basis uh, we believe our business is good for double digit growth we will come back with uh, with revenue guidance and and uh, and more as we come to the fourth quarter earnings call and and uh, but you know this our business is robust i think our emerging businesses are doing well so uh, so you know there's no reason for us not to believe that uh, that our business will grow double digit uh, thanks sir thanks a lot sir thank you the next question is from the line of suman kumar from motila loswal please go ahead yeah hi uh, uh, my question is uh, regarding soft flooring and you have uh, mentioned in the press release there is a strong inquiries from us canada and rw so can you discuss about more the is, is the soft flooring is going to similar way of the hard flooring what are the dynamics changing uh, in the global market for soft flooring so uh, look uh, uh, let me say that uh, this the hard flooring business has uh, taken off a little faster and uh, for the simple reason that you can install the floor this in almost no time and and uh, you know in covid times this it, it becomes very helpful so so while uh, sanjeev mentioned that uh, we are doubling and uh, this our capacity is all over again but uh, you know the fact is that we actually deferred our capacities uh, you know waiting for sales to come so which we are just completing our project so so with whatever capacity that we are growing it's just about completing the the, the initially envisaged capacity of uh, 10 million meters or or thereabouts so we will complete the project now that we are seeing uh, some some traction in that area coming to the soft uh, flooring so this we are seeing seeing now uh, you know a good response in the marketplace and uh, so it will take a little more time uh, for the simple reason that uh, it's a floor which takes uh, longer to a little longer to install and and uh, having said that i think uh, you know this week we are seeing enough positive uh, this drive all across uh, both our indian market as well as international markets to believe that uh, you know the investment has been put in the right place and uh, the second thing which uh, dipali also mentioned suman is that uh, look uh, from a manufacturing process perspective there are a lot of common things between our rugs business and and uh, and the soft flooring business so so we have also put in a plan in place now that our 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 wapi rug facility is working full throttle so we are also putting plans in place where we will be producing uh, materials for the rugs business as well so so we will be we will use uh, a part of our capacity to grow our rugs business in wapi as well so so all in all we feel uh, much better with uh, the soft flooring side of the business as well and hopefully in the next quarter uh you know this we could be a little more uh, emphatic and a little more granular in terms of numbers on the soft flooring side as well when you talk about the st strong inquiries coming from us so is that uh, what dynamics have changed uh, in four or five months uh, you are talking about uh, the overall inquiries has increased and all look uh, you know this so so a that it's a startup so in a startup uh you know and you make projections in a startup that you know this will get off the ground in 6 months or 12 months and sometimes it just takes a little longer for you to get off the road and 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 start seeing traction in the business so so we believe uh, that uh, the business was good enough right from right up front it's just that uh, you know this we this within 6 months we got hit by the covid situation and and before you know this we could make inroads with the clients uh you know travel stopped communication this uh, became almost uh, reduced to digital fund for a new startup this it makes things more difficult to open doors in an environment like this so so it just took us a little longer for for us to open the doors but you know so so it's it's just about what we are currently seeing 
is, is what we anticipated and what we projected in the past as we as we committed uh, the large capital expenditure. Uh, yes, you know the China plus one factor is also playing out. So you know this on on one side of the business, uh, you know the COVID situation accelerated our sales, but on the other it, it slowed down the sales uh, on the on the stock mm -hmm. side. But you know, you put the business in totality. I think this we are where we thought we will be just about a, a, a couple of or two or three quarters late, as as compared to where we thought uh, this uh, we would get to. And uh, so you know, so we are just seeing reinforcement of uh, of of the thesis on which uh, we actually made uh, the flooring investment, Suman. Okay. Uh, talking about overall, what we see the oh, three four years in past three four years, we have seen. You are talking about a domestic business, thousand crore. Then you are you have entered into in licensing or uh, in licensing a business also, and then uh, they are um, flooring solution. So overall, the business dynamics, the dependency on home, particularly bed sheets and uh, towel, is going to lower. So in next four to five years, how much dependency is going to reduce from all these new verticals? Vipali, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, Arjun. Thank you. So um, I think uh, the dependency on home textiles will not reduce, but I think it will complement. Because when you're talking about the consumer in the Indian uh, in the Indian context or the global context, I think the consumer is looking at home, and we provide a complete home solution for for towels, sheets, linen, bedding, rugs, carpets, and now flooring. So I think Suman, from your point, I think we are going to complement our home textiles with the flooring business here. And uh, we definitely see a robust grow, growth in retail, and uh, we uh, we are uh, absolutely positioned to achieve thousand crores as we have committed. No, no, I am asking. I am asking the dependency on towel and bed sheets. When we have entered into the flooring solution, where where we have a higher growth potential uh, export, particularly, then we have also entered into in licensing business. So that is that is another one, and then third third is domestic business. What you are talking about, a uh, thousand crore. I think currently two hundred, three hundred crore. In next four years, it is going to be thousand crore. Correct? Absolutely. So dependen yeah, dependency on towel and bedsheet is going to reduce. Where the market share of India is a forty to fifty percentage. So the growth growth is going to come from the flooring and domestic business and uh, technical textile and also you are in you are in you have entered into licensing that is also going to complement. So my question is in four to five years, what yeah. what is the mix uh, uh, of the towel and bed sheets versus others? So I'll tell you so much. I'll, I'll just cut it short to uh, give you a perspective. Uh, you are actually talking about the core business, the private label business. We are talking about the brands and the licenses. So, um, uh, and the e-commerce business, I'll give you the core business definitely will be a strong part of it. But if I can talk about the other businesses, they'll be growing. For example, a license business and a brand business is going to go to $100 million in America. A retail business I spoke about is 1,000 crores. And of course, the flooring is absolutely positioned. So the basket is going to grow bigger. So definitely that is there. A focus on brands and licenses will definitely be there. Our advanced textile definitely has an impetus. But they're all going to be there as a big basket there. Let me just add here, Suman, that uh, uh, so our our core home textile business is still good enough to grow, and uh, it will continue to grow. We believe every product category in our core business is 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 still good enough to continue to grow despite uh, whatever uh, market share that uh, that India has got, and and we have demonstrated that in the current year and. And uh, we believe we will continue to do so in the future as well. So all parts of our business will continue to grow. And, uh, you know, this, the core business will just be this augmented and, and, uh, and supported by all the emerging businesses. And, and look, we have been investing in these emerging business for almost four or five years now. And uh, hopefully the time over the next four or five years, all those investments will start, uh, you know, this paying back and start uh, looking uh, this much more productive. So, so, but to answer your question, uh, we believe that our core business and within the core business, also every single product category will grow, will continue to grow as well. Uh, can you discuss more about the licensing? Sir, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. May I request you to please rejoin the queue, sir? There are participants yeah. waiting for their turn. No. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants request you to please limit your questions to two per participant if you have a follow up question you may please rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of tena junjunwala from bnk securities please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh so congratulations uh, on a good uh, presentation uh, and uh, increasing the transparency in the business that we can now uh, see so uh, sharing uh, the capacity utilization and the b2b branded global domestic all these kind of break up just gives us uh, an insight that uh, you are getting into uh, sharing more information and uh, improving the transparency with us so that is commendable um my uh, question is largely on the cost increases that we have seen in this quarter um uh, our other expenses have increased and uh, gross margins have also improved at the same time so uh, is there a uh, the increase in yarn prices and other cost pressures not there uh, a part of uh, this quarter uh if you could throw some light there and uh, on what are the increases in other expenses major items and uh, whether this can improve, increase further in the coming quarters so we just wanted to understand the cost pressures that you are facing right now sanjeev you want to take that up yeah yes i will take that okay so just just to come to uh, on, on the on the on the on, on the major cost movement so if you look at so if when when you when you talk about yoy then obviously the raw material prices uh, haven't have been uh, you know uh, compared to last year they were still on an average a bit benign so actually we we gained a bit on 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 the contribution side from as far as the uh, input cost are concerned from a yoy perspective but if you look at the q1 q perspective then of course yes we had some uh, some pressure on but what happens and there are there is being Uh, mix, uh, mix the mix the the product mix is better than you know having a better margin uh, number one uh, number two uh, is of course that there is some increase in about five percent of exchange rate or which helps us in covering a bit of that increase happens uh, apart from that uh, the it will profit a little bit from the US business the UK business and foreign and the field business also help us in maintaining a margin coming to the other expenses. Uh, 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 so, so they look at other expenses in the which they are reported uh, because of our, you know, investors that some part of the semi-variable costs like stores and spares, dyes and chemicals, job work, contract labor, uh, even freight charges to that extent are a part of other expenses. So we did see increase uh, a large part of these increases were volume based, but some of the increases were all because of price increase, especially the freight costs where we did. Face about 20 to 25 crores of uh, higher charges than what we would have liked, liked, and 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 similarly, uh, there's been some headwinds on the dyes and chemicals in other space and stores and space. So largely, these are fueled by volume and a very small part of it also because of, especially the freight costs, which has been because of the higher freight global, you know, ocean freight which we all are experiencing now. Uh, uh, does, does this uh, answer your question? Yeah, sir. Uh, a part of it remains. Uh, how are these uh, cost pressures uh, going forward for the next two to three quarters? I so think. Take, in... Let me take that, sir. Jeev. Uh, okay. So, yes. so look. Uh, you know. So we have seen some some major movements on on uh, a lot of uh, the cost that we incur, and and particularly raw materials, uh, which is cotton and and yarn, and also the freight rates have have uh, moved up significantly. Now. uh when you look at it from a year on year perspective uh so the last quarter as sanjeev said was was by and large where we were in the same quarter last year but you should certainly expect uh, this uh, the cost pushes and the increased cost coming and impacting uh, impacting the margins in the future purely if you look at it from a cost perspective but having said that uh, look the company has got historically been following a, a foreign exchange policy so so you know this while the currency is appreciating but we have got some very strong edges uh, going forward into the future two is uh, this uh, with this growth in capacity there will be operating leverage that will uh, significantly improve and uh, also the sheer quality of demand 
where the innovative products are uh, are uh, let's say this contributing to a larger share of our business both the innovative as well as uh, the branded business which are better margin so so all these things put together aided by let's say this uh, hopefully uh, you know this uh, significantly reduced or eliminated losses coming from the flooring business so and let's say this uh, the continuing demand push uh, coming from this uh, home body economy and and the china plus one factor so so we believe that all these things along with our ability to move this prices upwards with the customer so we believe our business is still good to go for uh, for the kind of margins that uh, we have been promising over the last uh, several years which is let's say this 20% or thereabouts so you know plus minus uh, a couple of points here and there uh oh, so thank you that answers my question first question second question is largely on the advanced textile portion so you've deferred a part of it could you just help us understand what part of it is deferred and why and uh, how uh, will it definitely come back uh, into the system maybe in fy 23 or uh, beyond or it is deferred for good any reason mm-hmm. for that so look uh, you know so we have been if you have looked at Uh, this our net debt profile so this over the last 5 or 6 years uh, we have tried to remain a free cash flow plus company and and uh, this year in fact uh, this uh, a significant amount of debt is getting reduced so so we believe that uh, you know the part so what first thing is what we are deferring is uh, is the cotton bleaching uh, project uh, this which was a part of the advanced tech, advanced uh, textile business so we are deferring that out but you know with no immediate strategic impact on the business uh, so what we have decided to do is wait for this capital expenditure for for some more time and in the meanwhile we will source this uh, this bleach cotton from the outside and we need to use this bleach cotton for our for our uh, spun lacing business so instead of producing it uh, this will source source it from outside uh, build up the business and uh, you know this bring back uh, the investment at an appropriate time and uh, in the meanwhile you know this calibrate the capital expenditure <coughs> in a way that uh, you know this uh, we, we we continue to remain uh, this uh, cash free cash flow positive and and uh, also continue to reduce the debt in the company okay and so it was a cost reduction measure which you have postponed for some time okay yeah Understood. and very honestly look uh, you know the business is is in very good health right now and uh, you know so this uh, the margins will continue uh, you know this uh, for the moment with or without the bleach cotton uh, this uh, our own producing of bleach cotton so we will continue to 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 have robust margin so so you know we just want to defer it out for for some time and you know this uh, and, and we can live without it and there's no let's say this immediate strategic impact to our business so understood so market capture versus cost uh, this uh, vertical integration so market capture makes sense Correct. Correct. thank you sir thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of ankit ghosh from systematics please go ahead yeah hi thank you very much sir Uh, sir i'm just trying to understand our uh, broad break up between a uh, soft and hard flooring because despite rise uh, in pvc resin prices we have done really well on a ebitda margin front ebitda absolute ebitda front so you know still there is a uh, you know lesser loss or probably the uh, you know uh, loss on that front so uh, and and going ahead how do you see this pans out you know will it impact us or will not it will not that's my first look, question look uh, you know this i can't answer your question if you ask me what is going to happen in the next quarter but uh, what i can say you see these are these are global movement in 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 cost so you know the cotton or let's say the pvc it does j- just doesn't impact us as a company this is a global commodity uh, you know it impacts every single uh, let's say this uh, supplier factory in the world and when things like these happen uh you know there is uh, there is this tendency to 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 for all these costs to get passed on to the customer so so we believe that we will be able to pass this on yes uh, you know this on a on a given quarter i don't believe there is much impact that has come in the december quarter there might be some impact in the in the quarters uh, going forward but we right now you know the capacity ramp up is is happening so significantly that it will perhaps get mitigated by yeah. by let's say this much higher operating leverages but uh, 
you know the business is good enough uh, uh, boss for us to you know this uh, to to for us to say that uh, you know this over a period of 4 5 years we'll build a 2000 crore business and uh, the margin profile will be similar to the home textile business and uh, when we have already started uh, uh, let's say passing on our cost increases to our clients uh, there will be some some orders in the system at old prices which uh, where we might need to take some hit and which we will so and we are an honorable company we will honor every single commitment that we have made and uh, but we we have the confidence to pass on uh, let's say all these cost in increases uh, to our clients and we are already passing them on and uh, with most of them uh, we have also gotten price increases uh, with some fully with some not so not as much as we would desire we will this uh, bring those price changes about in more than one tranches so so but everybody is receptive look uh, you know these these cost increases have been so disruptive in the in the in the, in the recent past that there's no way that that you don't pass on uh, cost increases like this to client so so we believe uh, and we are confident enough and we've done enough conversations with our clients also on the flooring business to to understand that uh, we will be able to move them on yes uh, you know one or two quarters here and there but uh, this we will definitely pass these things on to our clients and look you know this we are still new to the business so you know there's still a lot of product improvements that will happen there will still be a lot of innovations that will come about in the business and and in the future they will all go to to contribute uh, let's say this uh, better margins in the business so you know look you look at our home textile business the hygro cotton came let's say this almost 15 years after we were we got into the business but uh, we learned from it and you know this once that came let's say this the margin started improving and likewise in this business now we have let's say this a much more matured company as uh, as well as from india so so we have kick started our innovation process even before we started our plant and you will see over the next 2 uh, 3 4 years that uh, some incredible products will get rolled out of our uh, flooring business as well and as as you mature as a business so you know this you get to a to the to the middle end of the market to the upper end of the market and that starts driving this uh, better margins in the future but one thing at a time right now it's about gaining market share and uh, you know passing on cost increases so so the next 12 months will be about that uh, and and then let's say this you know the the, the improved margin improvement kickers will start flowing in as uh, as we mature as a as a flooring business my second and last question would be sir uh, you know uh, we, we announced some deal of linking of about 225 crore it's it's uh, phenomenal to see that this will give us about 5.5x of assetent since it is a deep bottle making when there will be a need of sizable capex in our home textile uh, business for example you know setting up a 30 40 million meters capacity in uh, you know machir or something like that sir will there be any pressing need or for next 2 3 years we will see some uh, deep bottle making and uh, we will continue to do uh, in those business so look uh, you know this uh, so right now we believe we are doing enough for mm. us uh, for us that we need uh, at least for the next financial and uh, and and beyond that uh, also for example we are significantly growing the rugs capacity and and we are significantly growing our uh, bed linen capacity also uh, towels is about 7 8% that but then let's say this we have uh, uh, we are sitting on a huge capacity there and and what we don't want to do is you know this invest in capacities and then you know wait for the business to come you know uh, this over the last 4 5 years we have not done that and uh, we will not do that this going forward in the future as well so so we'll build capacities as we need them and uh, and look uh, you know this we have two sizable uh, sites uh, in operation both in wapi as well as anjar so so now nothing nothing greenfield needs to get done uh, for for our home textile business and they will be let's say this deep bottle and making you know so on and so forth so so you know this and we as i said this we will continue to calibrate our 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 capital expenditure and uh, and and you know calibrate it to the to the needs of the business and the requirements of the business but we do believe that right now what we are doing should be enough and uh, and uh, you know this uh, and we will we'll see as things go by and look mm-hmm. you know this market dynamics change nobody anticipated where, where this the cotton prices will move the way they, they are moving now that the yarn prices will move the way they have moved now so 
you know, and we believe that whatever these yarn price movements are not going to sustain, so they will come back to to normal levels over the next few months. But if they don't, uh, you know, so you know, so you have to take as a company, you have to react, and you have to do the right things uh, to protect your margins and to protect your business for future insulation. But right now, we believe that uh, what we are doing is enough and. Uh, you know, this uh, hopefully this uh, should uh, stand us in good stead for the next coming year, and uh, we'll keep coming back to you quarter yeah. on quarter if there are major changes in, in in our thought process. But right now, we believe we are doing enough. So, on follow up on this, 1,200 crore revenue from this de-bottlenecking, it is expected to come in in uh, probably a, a year and year and half, or what is the timeline we should expect? Here? The, the Pali will be. Yeah. The Pali, you want to take that? Yes. 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 Thank you, Adam. So first of all, even to your point of the expansion that you spoke about, I'll just add on, our focus will be on value-added products, our brands and licenses. And also with, uh, you know, joint partnerships with vendors, uh, ancillaries, OEMs. So that will actually give us that expanse if we need that. And um, um, secondly, um, uh, your question, uh, what you spoke about, can you just repeat it? I'm sorry, I just slipped. Uh, that we bottlenecking which we are uh, expecting yeah. to do. Oh. In, uh, yeah. No, I think the deep bottlenecking. Yeah, please, please, Deepali, please, sorry. Go ahead. So deep, deep bottlenecking is something that uh, you know we we will be uh, continuing to do. We'll be having partnerships that we can uh, talk about, and the rest I think uh, we will uh, continue to grow and focus on our brands. Actually, I think that's where we'll be working towards brands, innovation, uh, licenses. And uh, partnerships. I think that that's our focus. So I think uh, we will uh, we will do that. Yeah. So just to answer your, yeah, I I will answer it even more specifically. Uh, so 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 this plan, the the expansion, the, the debut making, is being done in a phase manner. So the first part of this will the, the fruits of this will start coming in towards the end of the first quarter of next year, and towards post the second half towards September to the December quarter, we will be able to complete the entire project. So the but, so we'll be able to start getting the 100% fruits of this a bit towards the fourth quarter of next year. So if you ask me on an analyzed basis, the 200 score would really be at 523. But next year, also we will get a significant amount of this because this is happening in a manner where, you know, uh, it starts getting implemented from the, towards the end of the first quarter of next year itself. Does that answer yeah, with the towers and the sheets, we will start kicking in the next six months itself. So yeah, it will yeah. continue to evolve in the next one year. The towers and sheets is actually Q1 FI22 already, and drugs is happening in two parts in Q2 and Q3. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratesh Cheetah from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to check on the flooring side uh, and the advanced petrol side. So advanced petrol, we have given the investment and the asset turn. Uh, wanted to know what will be the margins at the peak revenue uh, and when it will be achieved. And same way in flooring, what is our investments and what is the asset turn in that business and uh, the margin that you would achieve at the peak revenue? Good. Uh, no, I'll take that, uh, Sanjeev. So... Uh, yeah. So for the advanced materials, the margins are in line with uh, with our current business, and uh, we are hoping that uh, they'll continue to remain uh, this at at those levels uh, going forward in the future as well. Uh, right now, of course, the margins are are a little better, so we have uh, the tailwind. But uh, this over a period of time, uh, and we've been around for five six years, so this over a period of time, we have delivered margins which are in line with our uh, with our core business. So. So that's where it is likely to be. Uh, as I said, the business is doubling or, or more than doubling capacity on the Spanley side. And in FY23, from a 300 crore business, uh, we should look like more like 600 or thereabouts. And and uh, this at, at peak utilization, uh, this we should get to about 800 crores in revenue. But uh, you know that could happen perhaps in FY24 or maybe even 25. So. 800 uh, crores of revenue from the advanced textile uh, business uh, with the current uh, this expansion that we are doing. On the flooring side, uh, we are currently invested about uh, slightly north of 1,000 crores. There's another 250 
or crores of capex that still remains and we are spending that money as we need it uh, so on a 1300 12 1300 crores kind of a capex uh, at full throttle this will give us revenue in excess of 2000 crores and we believe uh, this uh, that uh, we will get to those kinds of uh, revenue levels over the next 4 5 years and uh, at those levels we will make again this margins in line with our current business and and give us a, a 15 to 20% kind of a return on capital employed so that's where we started from and uh, this uh, and and we maintain that uh, this as the business matures so even the flooring business will uh, will look uh, this as as our current uh, home textile business is looking So at what level uh, you should break even in the flooring business? So, uh, so our goal, and we'll come back with more specifics uh, towards the fourth quarter uh, call, gentlemen. But, uh, but uh, look, we have, I think, this we have seen now enough, uh, enough traction and positivity to say that uh, back half of the next year, uh, third quarter, we should be breaking even at at the EBITDA and hopefully FY twenty three. We, we are looking to cash break even, so but we'll come back uh, with a little more equipped to answer this question as we come into the fourth quarter earnings call. And by that time, this our budgets also would have been drawn up for the next year. So, so we will take more specifics about uh, about the about the next year and the years uh, beyond as uh, we come into the next earnings call. Okay. And uh, just lastly, the net working capital uh, cycle. Uh, for uh, the company should look like uh, what number uh, considering now all these three businesses uh, uh, would be existing sanjeev you want to take that ledger yeah. networking that we said so presently we are at about 90 days yeah. we believe that this could come down over the next six months because we are presently in the cotton season so it's little heightened But as on an average, we would look at something like 80 days of working capital cycle, net working capital cycle. That's the yes, annual year. That's the annual year end, right? Yes, absolutely. This 80 days uh, will will it look different when the flooring and the advanced material business uh, starts? No, uh, in fact, it? maybe so. It, uh, so 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 the net working capital in 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 advanced textile is well, I mean firmly negative. And the flooring also uh, doesn't have a data that is very low. So, so it actually has a, as this business grows, probably the net networking capital in the sense should improve. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, and all the best to you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Santalia from EK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, uh -huh. sir. Uh, I have recently seen the presentation of uh, Trident and the uh, attending the con call of uh, Indocom. They are quite bullish on fashion and institutional bidding, and they are uh, over the next five years they are uh, projecting a very high turnover uh, for the company. So we are also looking for that in that business. The Bali, yeah. We are talking about institutional business. Yeah, it's so not bedding, 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 bedding. So, um, so I'll just give you a perspective on what Wellspun, uh, Wellspun India focuses on that. Um, um, so for us, if I, I, we spoke about Martha Stewart and we talked about uh, Scott Living. So these are the these are the brands that are definitely going to have an impetus on a fashion bedding. Uh, as you know that you know when there are brands, uh, you know the sales of the fashion bedding definitely, uh, you know, has a thrust on. uh basic bedding will be ruled by our uh, uh, complete uh, vertical integration because with our uh, polyester bed in house with uh, with the te te technical textile um, and our innovative uh, products and fabrics that will enable us to do basic bedding so in sh in short we definitely have a trust and we have we are powered by our uh, brand licenses and our innovations that will uh, give us that growth there And madam, how big the opportunity is uh, because of China going forward in the home style, in the uh, fashion and institution bedding type of, uh, side of the business? So China definitely actually has a bigger majority in microfiber and the CVC. Uh, cot uh, cotton is India's uh, you know uh, you know area of growth. 
Uh, so definitely for basic for uh, bedding and uh, you know CVC is something that we see as an opportunity. So uh, that's where the growth uh, growth could come in actually, um, but it has to be really competitive. So let's see how that share comes in here. But yes, definitely uh, that becomes a big opportunity for India and also for Wellspun because we are completely vertically integrated in what we do. And going forward, madam, uh, whether we should go for uh, only forward integration or we should go for both uh, backward and forward integration? So if I talk about Wellspun India, what has held, held us together in the ter uh, terms of strength and what we are is a vertical integration from farm to shelf, from cotton to spinning to uh, the whole uh, process. I think that's where uh, we have had the strength. But going forward, you now with the brands and our uh, portfolio coming in, uh, we definitely would also be looking at partnerships. Um, uh, that could be that could be also a combination uh, with the vertical integration and uh, the front uh, integration as well. Okay, and madam, uh, because of this rise in yarn and cotton prices uh, over the next two three quarters, how much uh, margin pressure we can see in the home textile business? So as um, as we've already spoken about it, uh, definitely the cotton and yarn are uh, looking steeper. So and freight, of course. I mean, these all are the commodities have all gone way or not, uh, including uh, including freight. Um, so um, definitely, uh, there are the, the margins will be under pressure. Uh, but of course, uh, we uh, we go with the price indexing model to our customers and share wherever the gaps are, and uh, they definitely get addressed. So uh, that's the way it is going to be. And in short, yes, the margins will definitely be under pressure. But yes, we have an opportunity to share that with our customers as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Dipali Goenka for closing comments. So first of all, I want to thank everybody here uh, for being here. Uh, in uh, Western India's uh, earnings. Uh, um, the company, I just want to just end it by saying that the company remains committed in its long-term aspiration of delivering sustainable and profitable volume-led growth and the robust growth in core uh, home textiles. Domestic business looks very, very strong. Growth and innovation. E-commerce is the way forward and we see a double-digit growth there. Flooring is coming on track. An advanced textile sales will double FY23, and our margins for FY21 will be around 19 to 20%. So thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you. On behalf thank of Eagle by Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.